Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to set up local DNS records on a Raspberry Pi as well as forwarding requests for a local domain to another DNS server. Now I have already made a video on this before but things have changed a little bit since that video and there's now a menu in the admin panel which allows you to add local records just straight from the web GUI. So previously like my last video showed, you had to go and create a new list via the command line and add records that way. Now, things have gotten a lot more streamlined, and they've actually been that way for quite a while now, but I'm just now getting to this video. So I'm just going to walk you through kind of how to do that. But first, we're going to ask, why do we even want to do this? Now, to explain why we want to do this in the first place, if you don't know what a local DNS record is, it's the exact same thing as a regular DNS record, which translates to a fully qualified domain name, FQDN, to an IP address. Now, everything on the internet uses this. When you browse to Amazon.com, your computer has to talk to a DNS server to get the IP address of Amazon's web server. Once your computer has the IP address, then it can browse to Amazon.com. And I'm just using 1.1.1 as the example that is not Amazon. Now this is all invisible to you and it's happening behind the scene. Now a local record is just one that's local to your network. If you run your own DNS server, then you can manage your own records and they only apply to you. Now technically you can make this whatever you want, but there's generally uh, some safe to use local domains. What you could do is just designate your local DNS in your local domain as .com, but then don't be surprised when you can't get to anything on the internet with a .com domain, because DNS is going to think that your local network is the .com domain, and it's going to try and resolve everything for .com from your local records, which is not going to be good. So the moral of this story is just don't pick something that's a legitimate domain, or you won't be able to browse to it anymore. The two that are generally accepted for home use will be .local or .home. So I just realized that I said I was going to explain why you'd want to use local records, but really all I did was just explain what a DNS record is. So the reason you might want to use these in your home network is so you don't have to memorize IP addresses for the different devices. So like typically if you want to access your router, you'd have to go to like HTTP 192.168.1.1. Or if you want to RDP to another computer, you would put in the IP address 192.168.1.12 for example. But if you were using local host names or local DNS records, then your computer could go to your DNS server and resolve names such as router.home or desktop.local. This just makes things a little bit easier on you um, trying to work with your own devices because you don't have to memorize all the IPs of them. And also, if the IP of a device changes, you don't have to start using that new IP everywhere. The host name will work just fine. All you got to do is update the record on your DNS server to point to the new IP and you're golden and you're good to go. So now that we know why we might want to do this, uh, let's take a look at how we can actually set this up. So I'm assuming that you already have a pie hole set up and configured for this. Um, browse to your admin page and just log in. And you can see in my address bar, I actually browse to my Pi with December-DNS-Pi.LAN. I use .LAN as my local domain. Now on the left side of the page, you can see a menu for local DNS. Go ahead and go there. We get two options for DNS records or CNAME records. DNS records is where we're going to go. That's where we're going to spend the majority of our time. We don't really have a need to bother with CNAME records for what we're wanting to do. That's a whole different ball game. So go ahead and click on DNS records and you can see that we have a menu asking for a domain and an IP address. And this is where we create the local entries. Now while this says domain, this is actually uh, basically what you're going to be typing in and it's the meat of the A record. Now it's in sub.domain format and you can see here sub.example.com. So if we don't specify a root domain, if we just typed in like router here, then it's going to treat it kind of like a, a local host name. So if we do router 192.168.1.1, then we've added that. But typically what we want to do is actually designate our local domain. So we'll do router.home and we'll point that to something like, uh, we'll actually just 
just use my router and see if we can get there. So once we add the DNS record, we should be able to go to HTTPS router.home and you can see we have our edge router login. So our local DNS record works. And I know that I just said that uh, the Pi will treat it like a local host name if you don't designate a domain, but uh, that is actually not the case. I did add a record for just router and it does not work. So router.home is the one we're going to be using. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one I just made. And actually, I guess I just deleted both of them. All right. And just one more time, I'm going to create another one just called modem.home. And we're going to point that to the IP of my modem. Go ahead and add that. It's updating the entry. Now let's go ahead and try to go to HTTP modem.home. Home. And we actually get an error here that says DNS probe finished NX domain. Basically what that means is that we didn't resolve a host name uh, for that DNS entry, but you can see that we just created it. So what's the issue here? Well, one way we can kind of test this is just open up command prompt and try to ping what we just made. So modem.home and you can see ping request could not find modem.home. Please check the name and try again. Now, if you get this error, the first thing you want to check is just what DNS servers you're using. If we do an IP config slash all at the bottom, we can see I have two DNS servers here. Now, these local entries are only applying to one of these. So just for example, in my house, I have two different uh, Pi-hole DNS servers. So while we added the record to one of them, my computer's probably trying to pull that record from the other one that doesn't have it. So if I just try to ping my Pi-hole here, you can see that it it resolves to 10.88.88.244 and that's actually set as my secondary DNS server. So in my case, I'm going to need to go into my adapter options, go to properties, update IPv4 to use the following DNS servers, 10.88.88.244. .88 Just okay, close out of all of that and well, it automatically refreshed. So now that we're actually pointing to the correct DNS server, our host name has resolved properly. Now the last entry that I did, the router, I expected that one to fail, but it didn't. So for some reason, this computer was on the secondary DNS server for that one. I'm just gonna add that back in and it should work immediately again. And it does. So now that's how you create your DNS records. They automatically update. They should work as soon as you put them in. If for some reason you are pointed to the correct pie hole and they're still not resolving, try restarting the pie hole or logging into the command line and uh, restarting the DNS service. Past that, there's probably something else going on. Now keep in mind that if you do have any self-hosted sites and they don't use port 80 or 443 for browsing, then you're going to need what's called a reverse proxy in order to actually get the records to work without having to manually designate a port number. Now, for example, I have a unified controller, which only runs on port 8443. So I'm going to create a, uh, a record for unify.home and point that to the IP of my unify controller. Now we've added this DNS entry, but if I go to HTTPS unify.home, it's going to time out because that service isn't running on port 80 or 443. So when I browse to HTTPS, I'm designating port 443 in my browser. I'm still going to have to put 8443 at the end of that if I want it to properly resolve to the web page I'm looking for. So just keep that in mind if you are running something like Unify or something that just does not use port 80 or 443 that you're trying to browse to, you do still have to tack on that port number to the end of it, or else you will need something like a reverse proxy to get around that. But that's a whole other subject. Now, some common questions and just some caveats here. Uh, one question that comes up frequently when I'm talking about this is, uh, how do you get your host names to automatically be added to DNS? So for example, say my desktop already has a name of desktop one and it shows up in my DHCP server as desktop one, why can't I just browse or ping that using only the host name? Now you might already be able to do this, but it's actually tied very closely to DHCP instead of DNS. So 
your DHCP server holds the host names for all the computers that it leases IPs to. So for example, if I'm using the PyHole as my DNS server, then I would also need to be using my PyHole for DHCP if I wanted to track all the local host names. Now what most people end up doing is just using their router for DHCP and the PyHole for DNS. Um, in that case, your router has all the actual local host names. It's going to automatically be populated with that, but your PyHole is not. Now probably the easiest way to get around to this is just to use your PyHole for DHCP and you can enable that on the side here. Uh, go to settings and then there's a tab at the top for DHCP and we can check the box for DHCP server enabled. We can give it a range of IPs to hand out. Now if you're setting this, make sure that this range actually matches the range that uh, you're currently using and that your router IP is correct. Also, and it warns you about this, make sure your router's DHCP server is disabled. If it's not, you're going to have two DHCP servers on the network. They're going to be fighting each other. You're going to have all kinds of issues. So if you are going to use your Pi Hole for DHCP, just make sure you don't have it running anywhere else. Now, another question that comes up a lot is when we're talking about using a Pi Hole for its original capability of blocking ads and filtering DNS requests, but it's on a network that already has a functioning DNS server, which is also tied to local host names and DHCP. Like for example, if you use Windows Server for Windows DNS and DHCP, then all of your DNS records are probably gonna be created in there. And especially if you've already created a lot of DNS records, then that's your primary local DNS server, but you still wanna use the Pi Hole for that ad blocking capability. How are you able to resolve your local host names while using the Pi Hole? Well, this is actually relatively simple and you can configure it through the admin panel as well. So let's go back there. And it's actually under the settings menu as well. Instead of DHCP, we're gonna go to DNS. And at the very bottom here, you can see we have an area for conditional forwarding. Now, I already have this configured, but this is where you will kind of designate a, another DNS server that's authoritative for a certain domain. So in my house, I actually do use Windows Server for my DNS, but I also use the Pi Hole for blocking the ads. Now, my domain here at home is .lan, so I just have that set for the local domain name. I have the IP address of my DNS server. Now the pie hole does say IP address of your DHCP server or router. If you do want to actually resolve local host names, you could just point this there and not set your pie as DHCP. Like we said in the uh, last uh, <laughs> question I explained, but really what this box is, is just the DNS server that you're pointing it to. And then the local network, this is used for uh, reverse name resolution. And this is the IP range that you expect to be resolved to this domain. So in my example, 10.88.whatever uh, slash 16 network, I expect to be on the .lan domain. So effectively what happens is if I try to go to anything .lan, it's gonna to go to my pie hole. My pie hole is gonna see that it's for this domain and it's gonna forward it on to whatever uh, DNS server I specify here. Now the downside is that you can apparently only do this for one domain and for one DNS server, which is kind of a bummer um, if you have more than one. I know that there is ways to uh, actually configure more than one DNS server or more than one uh, conditional forwarding rule, but that again is gonna be done through the command line and that's not what I'm gonna to get to in this video. And that's pretty much it. There are a few more features, but this is about as far as I typically go with the Pi Hole configuration. Uh, there's still some custom configurations you can do with the command line, such as most likely adding more than one uh, conditional forwarder. But for adding local records, this is really the most simple way to do it. Uh, hopefully it clears up some of the questions that I've had about um, Pi Hole records since my last video. And hopefully you learned something about DNS that you didn't already know. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and happy networking.